Tyrannosaurus Rex, the legendary king of dinosaurs, has undergone several dramatic revisions in appearance since it was first recognised as a new species back in 1905. You're probably familiar with the outdated reconstructions of this animal and the story of how it was discovered to be a more active, horizontal standing creature, leading to our up-to-date, relatively accurate understanding of this dinosaur. You may also be familiar with the video game Saurian. It's a project that aims to simulate the ancient Hell Creek formation of North America, to give players an authentic representation of what this place would have been like 66 million years ago. In the game, you play as a dinosaur that must survive from a hatchling to an adult, and he must hunt, find water, and avoid predators in order to survive. Well, recently, the team working on Saurian have revealed their massive year-long project in a blog post the complete redesigning of their game's T-Rex. And it might just be the most accurate Tyrannosaurus anyone's ever created. So why did they completely redesign it? There used to be a partially feathered T-Rex that was being used in the game, but it was decided it was time to update to keep in line with recent developments. In June of 2017, a fateful paper was published that shook up the world of dinosaur paleontology. Phil Bell and colleagues described the fossilised remains of skin and skin impressions from various Tyrannosaur taxa, including Dasplitosaurus, Gorgosaurus, and Tyrannosaurus itself. And what did they find? No evidence of feathering, just reptilian-like, scaly skin. Now, I myself was admittedly a big fan of the feathered T-Rex so many of us had gotten used to seeing, and, like a lot of people, I was initially sceptical of this study. A common argument made by some was that the skin impressions from T-Rex were from regions we already knew to be devoid of feathers, such as the tail, and that the paper didn't change anything about what we knew this animal to have looked like. As the Saurian devs say themselves, this explains why their previous design was partially scaled in areas such as the tail and underbelly. Taphonomy was also blamed for the lack of preserved feathers, with suggestions being made that perhaps these animals were feathered in life, but for whatever reason the feathers had just not been preserved like the scales had. However, the Saurian team make an excellent case for why this is not likely to be true. The traces of scales that were identified in Tyrannosaurus itself were also from the neck and pelvic regions in addition to the tail, and the closely related Albertosaurus and Tarbosaurus show scales from the chest region. This is a very broad distribution of scales across most of the body, and it seems far more likely that this indicates a full body covering of this type of integument instead of feathering somewhere in the gaps between. Therefore, as the Saurian blog states, the simplest, most parsimonious conclusion is that Tyrannosaurus rex, and probably other Tyrannosaurids too, were fully covered in small scales that resemble the reticulae of bird feet. There's another good reason for welcoming back scaly tyrants though, which the blog post also explains. Not only do we have direct evidence of the kind of integument these animals possessed, but it also makes sense for them to lack feathers when you consider the biomechanical side of things too. Research by paleontologist Scott Hartman, who was also one of the consultants for the T-Rex redesign, has indicated that animals tend to stop gaining an advantage from insulating integument once they reach sizes of between 1 and 3 metric tons, depending on the environment they live in. And if the animal is not benefiting from such integumentary structures, they're very likely to be selected against, and eventually mostly lost. We can see this occurring in our modern animals too, especially in the case of large-bodied mammals such as elephants that have lost the majority of their fur. So a large tyrannosaur would actually be under selection pressure to lose any feathers that may be ancestral to its lineage. And that's another good point that the Saurian blog makes. Feathering has already been lost several times amongst other lineages of dinosaurs, despite it probably being an ancestral condition to the entire clade. Sauropods, other theropods, ceratopsians, ornithopods, and thyreophorans all lack feathers too, so for feathers to be lost in Tyrannosaurids doesn't seem all that implausible. Anyway, it's not just the skin they've redone. In the process of recreating the Tyrannosaurus, the Saurian devs made sure to give it accurate musculature. With the help of Scott Hartman, the team's artist, RJ Palmer, did an incredible job of drawing every single muscle on this creature's body. The blog explains how, initially, RJ gave the Rex fairly large muscles on the arms, however Scott Hartman recommended they slim them down a bit, resulting in relatively skinny looking forelimbs on this reconstruction. Seeing as how the exact purpose of this animal's arms in everyday life is still not known for sure, there could certainly be a range of different arm muscle sizes plausible for T-Rex. 
For example, if they were not being used very much, or at all, and were just vestigial structures, they may have had a very small muscle mass and appeared extremely skinny. On the other hand, if they were being utilised for some of the many purposes that's been suggested for them, such as grappling with prey, or to help with getting up off the ground, they might have had some beef to them. But with what we currently know, the arms in the Saurian Rex are just about as thick as they can be. Next, we come to the head. This has been another contentious factor recently, with the publication of another paper in 2017 that came to some very interesting conclusions on what exactly the face of the tyrants appeared like in life. Paleontologists Thomas Carr and colleagues described a new species of Tyrannosaur in March of 2017, naming it Despletosaurus horneri, and provided evidence for being able to devise what sort of integumentary features were present on the head based on bone textures in correlating skull regions. This paper stated that the new Tyrannosaur they were describing, which is a close relative of T-Rex by the way, possessed a keratin covering over the hornlets above its eyes, as well as tough skin running along the upper surface of the snout, in addition to large scales on the sides of the snout that they compare to those of crocodilians. Like in crocodilians, the authors of the paper suggest that these large scales acted as sensory structures. However, the problem is that crocodilians don't actually have large flat scales on their faces, and their skulls here are instead covered by a layer composed of tough skin that has cracked over time as the animal has aged, resulting in a texture that appears scaly. For these reasons, the Saurian T-Rex does not have large flat sensory scales on its face, but instead possesses a few ornamental scales similar to those found in certain lizard species. Unique depressions and ridges on the maxilla support the presence of such an integumentary arrangement. The keratin sheath on the hornlets and the toughened skin running along the top of the skull do seem to have probably occurred in life, and therefore have also been reconstructed. The presence or absence of lips has been yet another topic of debate, and the Saurian team explains their reasoning for including immobile fleshy soft tissue lips in the blog. There is research that indicates you can work out what sort of soft tissue an animal had around its mouth based on the number of foramina in a jaw. Foramina are small holes in the bone, and through comparing the number of these structures in T-Rex bones to those in living animals, it can be reasonably assumed that tyrannosaurs likely had lips similar to those of modern lizards, ones that cannot be moved in the way we can move ours, but they still cover up the teeth when the mouth is closed. Now, obviously one thing that cannot be absolutely accurate is the coloration of the animal, since this is still an unknown aspect for T-Rex. However, RJ Palmer did an excellent job of creating a reasonable, yet not boring, colour scheme for this reconstruction. Apparently large reptiles such as crocodilians and komodo dragons were some of the influences for the skin colour, although there were also two specific animals that were the primary inspirations, but no one has yet guessed what they are. Something perhaps worth mentioning is the recent study published in June of 2018 that found that many dinosaur groups, including the tyrannosaurs, were likely unable to move their tongues very much, comparing them to the relatively immobile tongues of crocodilians. So the tongue here might have been recovered as slightly too flexible for what it should really be like, though obviously this is a very tiny nitpick. Anyway, I think this reconstruction is an incredible achievement, and it's certainly very beneficial for science communication when you can look at a piece of paleo art and then read in so much detail all the evidence and thought that has resulted in the animal before you. And to me, this definitely feels like the closest we've been to seeing what Tyrannosaurus rex was really like. However, with science always developing as new evidence comes to light, especially in the case of paleontology, this design will probably have to change again in the future to remain as accurate as possible. Clearly, this topic is still a fairly controversial one too, and I expect many people will have opinions about the new look, so feel free to respectfully discuss what you think in the comments. I would recommend reading the Saurian blog post if you'd like to find out more, and there are plenty of relevant research articles cited there. Before anyone starts criticising this new rework too much, I'll leave you with a quote from consultant Mark Witten. I've got to say that there aren't many paleo projects where this much attention is given to producing credible animal appearances. To naysayers, I'd be asking, can you do something better with the data we have to hand? Because if not, it's time to stop sniping and appreciate the work that's gone into this project. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.